Continue weaving up the loom using the same opposite of every row back and forth. Make sure to stagger your ends so that they're spread out around the loom. Later on, we're gonna take these ends and tuck them down inside the loom. So if there's too many all clumped up together or if they're all on one side, it um, begins to bunch up on one side of the loom and you'll be able to see one side's thicker than the other. So your back should look like a bunch of really long strings taped so that you have plenty of end to work with later. And you're gonna continue making your way up the loom towards the top, trying to make your way back towards the um, horizontal line there. When you get towards the top, it's gonna get a little bit tighter. You can actually hear mine squeaking. Um, and you might have to lift up some of the warp strings to be able to get them to go under. Um, you don't have to go all the way up to the line. You'll get to a point where the eye of the needle is going to be too big to fit through. And that's about where you wanna stop. But you do wanna try and go as high as you can get it um, because it'll make your coaster look, whoops, lost my urine there. It'll make your coaster look a little bit more square if you're able to get as close to the top as possible. So continue making your way up until you just can't add any more rows. Also remember at this point, you shouldn't be able to see any of the warp strings. And I'll lift this up throughout my coaster. I've packed those things down nice and tight. If you can see little white dots like this, down lower in your coaster. You want to make sure that you're really packing those down. You can see that when I just pushed on that, I got a little bit more space on my warp strings to work. You want to make sure that they're packed nice and tight and that no warp strings are showing before you try and remove the weaving from the loom. The more that you can get on there, the um, more sturdy the whole thing will be when you're all done. All right, so I'm starting to get a little tight here. I'm gonna try and get a, another two rows in before I finish. And I just wanna be really gentle when I get to the top. You saw me kind of helping the needle through there because you don't want to snap your warp strings. So you want to walk the fine line of trying to get as many in there as you can, but also not breaking any of the warp strings that you have there. And if you're having trouble when you get towards the top of the loom, getting this big needle to go through, you can switch out to your smaller yarn needle. It has a smaller eye on it. It won't be as easy to get through because you'll have to kind of pull it through about halfway. So I made it about halfway. I'm gonna pull my yarn through here and then pick up my pattern where I left off. But you can see the little needle goes through much more smoothly than the big one. So sometimes you might have to switch. And just make sure if you're coming up in the middle and starting again, that you're not missing one of those rows of the warp strings as you head back. All right, 
And I've pretty much reached the spot on here, right below that top horizontal line where I just can't really get the needle through any longer. So I'm gonna cut that last end nice and long. And I'm ready to start tucking my ends. Once you've completed all of your rows of weft and you're ready to start hiding your ends, you're going to take each end and you wanna tuck them one at a time. So this works best with the short needle that you have. So you're gonna thread the end of your loose end here into the needle. And you don't wanna tie a knot because you don't wanna make a big lump, but the smaller needles will hold on to the yarn a little bit better. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm going to follow the warp string on the end here. And I wanna go down about five rows of weft. So I'm gonna turn this on its side so that this is a little easier to see. And I'm going to wiggle my needle. So I'm going right alongside this first warp string. And I wanna make sure that I'm staying inside that little tube. And if I lift this up, I can kind of see that underneath my needle is inside those loops. And you wanna go down about five rows or so. Once you've got the needle through, you're going to pull your end down. And I'm just gonna use my finger here to straighten these rows back out. You want to pull the end down just enough where it tucks in, but not so much that it pulls all the ends together because we're hiding it and we don't want anybody to see where we're tucking those ends. So once I've done that, I'm going to cut this. Very careful not to cut my weaving. I'm just cutting off that spare end and I'll move to my next piece. So you're going to make your way down each piece unraveling. So I'm going to remove my tape, free my next end. And it doesn't matter whether you go up five rows or down five rows, whatever looks easiest. Um, so I have stripes in mine. So I want to try and hide the reds in the red and the white in the white so it doesn't show up very much. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this red string up so that I'm allowing room for this red string to go up here and they're not gonna run into each other. So sometimes you kind of have to plan ahead. You don't wanna try and stick too many warp string or weft strings um, through the same spot. So I'll sort that back out once I get that through there. And you wanna cut your ends as you're tucking them. If you leave them to cut at the end, sometimes you lose track of which ones you've tucked and which ones you haven't, and you end up tucking and untucking the same end multiple times. So I'm gonna take this end, tuck it in on this side, actually, for the video. Let me do this one on this side. So this one, I brought this end up, which allows me to bring this end up and not be adding too many ends to the same spot. So I'm gonna take this, and sometimes you just have to wiggle a little bit. If it goes six rows instead of five, it's not a problem. You just don't wanna do like two rows because that's not really enough to hold it. So remember, you're pulling just tight enough and careful not to pull, cut your warp. Now I'm gonna free this end here. And this is why it was really important that we left long ends. If your ends are too short, you're not gonna be able to get them onto the needle in three rows. So this row is white, so I wanna take it back through white. And I only have, looks like five, oops. So this row here is white, so I wanna take it through the white string. So I'm gonna take this one up here, and it looks like I only have about five rows of white but that'll be okay. I don't wanna end the white. You can see sometimes you kinda of have to just wiggle it and work with it for a minute to get it to pop out where you want it to. Just be really careful not to break those warp strings. There we go. So once I've got it through, five rows is enough. 
and give that a little wiggle. Just tight enough to hide it and cut that end. So you'll continue, and if I smooth that out, that little fuzzy part disappears and I'm good to go. So you're gonna continue working and hiding all of your ends until every single end is gone. If a little bit of your warp starts to kind of show up here, you can see mine is loosening a little bit as I'm working, that's fine. When we take it off of the loom, um, we're gonna tighten up those warp strings and all of those will disappear. So if the end starts to loosen up a little bit as you're hiding your ends, that's not a big deal. If you start seeing warp strings poking through in the middle, then you wanna just kind of pack everything back down because no warp string should be visible anywhere in the coaster except for right up against the top where you're finishing. So I did end up on this side with two pieces that are gonna have to go through the same area. Let me get this tape off of here. Um, the whites, I want to keep in the white stripe because if I run those up in the red, I run a risk of them being visible. So when I go to tuck these in, this white one is going to have to go this way and this white one is going to come this way. So I just have to make sure that when I go to put those through that I'm just really careful that I'm not poking the other end out. So this one is going to go down and this one is going to go up if I didn't have different colors I could spread these out in different places but you want to try and keep the ends tucked into like colors because they will um, stay visible a little bit so I don't know if you can see there um, that little lump started to come out. So I just wanna be really careful that I'm not pushing that end back out, which it looks like part of it did. So I'm gonna cut my end here. And I can see that a little bit of that end from the first time piece that I put in there started to come out a little bit. So what I want to do is um, try and tuck that back in. Now I can't put this on the needle and put the needle through because um, the piece is too short. So what I'm going to do instead is preload the needle. So I'm gonna put the needle through with no yarn in it. And I'm gonna pull the eye of the needle all the way down to where that string is. And then I'm gonna carefully, and I'm gonna use my other needle if I can get this tucked in here. All right, so I've got that little end tucked in and now I'm gonna try and pull that end back into its original home. And it worked. Ta-da. But that's exactly why you don't want to try and stick two pieces through the same area because sometimes one will push out the other. So if you do have to do that, just be very careful. And I'm down to my last end. I'm just gonna tuck that in there. Spread that back out. Cut. And I just wanna double check before I start to remove this from the loom, that all of my ends are tucked in. Nothing is sticking out anywhere. I've got all my ends in. My rows look nice and spread out. 
And you can see that the outside edge got a little bit thicker tucking those ends in there, which is why we want it. But if you look carefully, you'll see both of them are kind of puffed up a little bit. So that's why we wanted to evenly distribute our ends because that allows it to be uniform through the whole project and not just puffy in one part. Removing your weaving from the loom. If you put tape on the teeth of your loom, you're very carefully going to pull that back. And when you pull back the tape, you want to make sure that you're not ripping those little teeth off. So I'm going to gently pull towards the end of the loom. And I'm not gonna take my tape and bend it backwards here because that could just rip off the teeth. So instead, once I've got that side free, I'm gonna come to the back here so that you're pulling up and away from the loom. You shouldn't be pulling the tape down towards the back because that could bend these back um, and rip some of them off. So we are ready to begin working our weaving off of the loom. It is super important that you start in the correct corner and follow the directions removing the weaving so that um, you can very easily uh, get all of the ends tucked in. So we're going to begin again with the star in the top left corner, triangle in the right, and we are going to begin to remove the warp string. So I'm going to take my first warp string, this is the one I started with, the first thing I taped down, and I'm gonna remove that from the back of the star corner. And I marked the back of mine so you can kind of see them a little better. And I'm gonna free that first warp string so it's no longer held in the tab. And I'm just gonna leave that one there. You're then going to go to the bottom, the circle corner, and I'm just gonna push this up a little bit here so I can see my tabs a little bit. So I've come to my circle corner down in the bottom corner. I'm gonna flip it over onto the back and this, let me show my, my marker. This is my circle corner, square, just so you can get an idea on the back and the front, which one's which. So I freed my star, pop that off, and I'm going down here to the bottom of my circle corner. I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna take the first horizontal warp string that I see there, and I'm gonna pull it up and off the tab. One of the things that might make that a little bit easier, especially if your weaving is really tight, is to bend the tab forward a little bit Grab that warp string. You can even take your needle if your fingers are having a hard time grabbing it and pop it up and then I'll just push the tab back in place. So I have this little loop on the bottom. Remember that the warp string is snaking its way up and down through this entire project. So what I wanna do now is I wanna take up the slack. So I'm going to leave this first loop here and I'm going to come up to my second loop here on the top. I'm gonna to bend this tab forward a little bit. So now I'm back by my star. I'm gonna hook my needle under here and use that to pop my needle, my warp thread forward. So now I have my free end by my star, my loop down by the circle, and I have another loop right up here by my star. I'm going to grab just the left side. So I'm grabbing the side of the loop closest to the star. If you grab the whole loop and pull on it, nothing happens because this side is anchored down. You're going to pull just the left side of the loop. So I'm gonna hold my weft strings out of the way and I'm pulling and you can see that loop just disappeared. You wanna pull just a little bit, just enough to get that loop on the bottom to disappear. Now, I'm gonna leave this loop alone and I'm gonna come down to the bottom. And you're going to pop off one of the bottom warps. Now I'm going to go to the one that I just popped off and I'm gonna pull just the left side of the loop and you can see here up on top as I'm pulling this left side, that top warp string is coming down. And you wanna pull 
just tight enough that it starts to pull those weft strings in. You don't want to pull so tight that it cinches the whole thing down and warps it out of uh, shape. So now my loop on the bottom has gotten a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to go back to my top. Pop off my next warp string, which again can be made easier sometimes by bending that tab forward. Come on. There we go. Now I'm going to take the left side of this one that I just released and pull until the loop on the bottom snugs up against the bottom. Even with the first one. You're gonna continue this pattern. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom because I just pulled the top. Once I pop the loop on the bottom, you're always gonna pull the loop that you just popped off. So now I'm pulling the left side of the bottom and the top loop is disappearing, snug. Now I'm gonna pull off the top loop and take up the slack by pulling on my top loop. So release the loop and pull to take up the slack on the opposite side. So I just finished pulling on the top. I'm gonna go back to the bottom. Pop my loop on the bottom. And you're pulling just the left side. Sometimes it's a little hard to get it started, but just the left side of the loop. If you grab the whole loop and pull, you'll see not much happens. So I pulled on the bottom. Now I'm gonna pop off and pull on the top. Finish pulling on the top, move to the bottom. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way until I make it to the end. If you pull a little too far, you can just kind of grab it. And you saw I just dug my thumb in there and pulled it up a little bit as I had pulled it down too far. So I can pull it back a little there. As long as you fix it before you move on to the next loop, you can just kind of pull it back up. If you pulled it too far and you've already gone down a couple of loops, it doesn't really fix. You'll keep going. And this is a little tedious for your fingertips, so if your fingers need a break for a minute, you can stop, give a little stretch, and return. If you're having a hard time getting your finger in the loop, which sometimes I do, you can kind of stick the needle in there and start. There we go. Just till it snugs on top. Last loop on top. I'm going to pull this last one. Until that snugs. And then the last one isn't a loop. It's the very, very end where we warped our loom earlier. So carefully remove your tape. And then the last thing 
it's going to be to free it from the loom. And you're gonna take this last free end and give that a tug, taking up that last loop in the top. Again, don't pull so tight that the whole thing yanks the whole thing down. You want it to stay square. So what you should be left with is the start tail of your warp thread and the finish tail. The finish one is going to be a lot longer than the start one. So you can trim this one down. Um, I cut probably five inches off of there. You do want to leave it a little bit long. You don't want to make it short because remember in weaving, you never want to be dealing with short ends. It's a whole lot harder. And then we're ready to tuck our warp ends. Hiding the ends of your warp is very similar to hiding the string ends from your weft, the pieces that we were weaving with. So we're gonna take our needle and I am going to give this one tie. This string is so thin. If I tie a knot, it's not gonna get me all jammed up. So I'm gonna tie one little twist on here like I did with my weft string. Now this part is super important. When you go to weave the warp string back in, you do not want to put the string back into the first row. If you do that, what you're actually doing is backing it out, which could mean that the whole bottom corner begins to unravel. Because remember, this string is what all of these strings are wrapped around. So if you start backing this out of where it originally lived, there's nothing for this stuff to hold on to. So you do not want to go back down the first row. You're going down the second row. And if I look really closely, uh, I can see here that I've got these little bumps. These lumps, these little rainbow arcs, bump, bump, bump are my warp strings. So this is my second warp string. This is my third warp string. So I wanna make sure as I'm going through, I wanna go down the second tube. So I'm going to find my second warp tube here, and I'm gonna go down like five or six rows and pull my warp string through. And then again, just tight enough so that the top snugs. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go back up row three. For the warp strings, we kind of hide them a little better than the weft because remember, this is the structure you're weaving on. This is what's holding it all together. So we really want to anchor this right. So you'll pull that just so that little dot disappears. And then one more time, down row four. So we went down, up, and down. And then you can cut your warp string. And just give it a little wiggle so that little piece disappears. And there is the end. So I'm going to do the same thing with this end. Once I've completed one corner, I'm going to move to the other, tie my warp string on, and I am going to go down the second row. Up third. And down the fourth. Pull my needle off. Carefully cut my warp string. Just kind of straighten it out. And you're finished.